Hi, this is Mark from LongIslandWatch.com, and today is going to be a quick uh, edition of Watch and Learn. You know, after like number 10 or so, I stopped counting, and, and just before I shot this one, I went and checked the archive. This is actually number 45, which uh, I actually can't believe that I can, so far I've thought of 45 different things to talk about, and I've, there's a lot more percolating around up here. Uh, today's video, as I mentioned, will probably be pretty quick. Uh, it's a shout out to Vinay. I apologize if I, you know, didn't say your name right. I uh, emailed me this morning some stuff and we were chatting and he said, why don't you do a video on helium escape valves? And I said, wow, I've never actually, I never thought of that. And I know all that off the top of my head and I can just roll it right here. Don't even need the table. It's all just going to be me talking. So this one goes out to you. So this video is going to be about helium escape valves, what they are, and do you need them? I'll do a quick wrist check. And for the occasion, I'm wearing a Zin U1, which is a uh, thousand feet. Yeah, no, a thousand meters. Wow, it's a thousand meter water resistant watch. But interestingly enough, no helium escape valve and a Seiko Orange Monster, 200 meters, no escape valve. So what is a helium escape valve? Well, it is, I actually have a watch here. I do sell a few watches with them. This is a Laco, uh, Laco Squad, oh, excuse me, Laco Ocean. It's a, another 1,000 meter dive watch. If you look at the side of the case right here, I'll see if I can get the camera to focus on it and not me. One second. There you go. So you can see the escape valve right there by my fingertip. It is a little valve that's built into the case of the watch. And it is there, as the name suggests, to let helium escape out of the watch. Now, why is this important? Well, for you and, well, I'm gonna, definitely for me, it doesn't matter. I'm going to guess for you, it probably doesn't matter. The only people that really need this are so-called commercial divers. People that dive in a saturated environment, uh, maybe they're staying under for a extended period of time, not just a dive, but maybe it's a week, maybe it's two weeks, and they're working under the water, and you don't want to have to go up and down, up and down all the time because there's all the decompression stops, it takes a long time, so they remain in a saturated environment. I'll get more to that in a second. Uh, so they would be the ones that would benefit from something like this. So for all the watches out there that have them, you know, this Laco, uh, maybe a watch that you own. I know Omega's got it on a bunch. I believe the Sea Dweller has it as well. Um, it's probably not needed. Um, it's there to probably more for marketing to make you feel like you're getting a real professional commercial grade watch, which you are. Um, but you know, when you're in the, the design business and you're trying to make something watertight, the last thing you want to do is add another hole to it <laughs> that needs another gasket because that just makes it harder to seal. And that's what you're doing with all these watches. You're making them harder to seal. So what is the valve? The helium escape valve is simply a one-way valve. It goes, I guess I'll just use the watch as an example, it takes the gases that are in the watch, and let's say they get the pressure inside the watch gets higher than the pressure outside the watch. It, the valve opens, it pushes, it's against a spring, it's a one-way valve, and the air goes out. It's all it is. It's a one-way valve, only letting stuff out of the watch when the pressure inside the watch gets too high, and will never let anything in, because the higher the pressure is on the outside of the watch trying to get in, the valve just seals tighter and tighter against the gasket. So that's all it's doing. It's letting gases that build up inside the watch have a place to go out. Now, what happens if you don't provide them the place to go out? Well. The, in the real extreme case, uh, when the gases inside the watch want to expand they, and they can't get out, they will either blow out through the crystal, which will cause the crystal to pop, crack, whatever, um, or just in turn just damage the watch. You'll blow a seal or something. Uh, so that is really the reason behind them. But some watches, um, I'm going to guess the Zin is one of them, it doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't require it. The crystal is strong enough to take the force and that when you come to surface over time the watch will uh, depressurize on its own. What happens is the really small helium atoms, uh, monatomic helium especially, is super small and it sneaks in past the gaskets, it gets in and then when you depressurize it wants to get out and thus all the pressure. So let me just back up a bit. So this is for saturation divers, people diving in diving bells. Uh, so if you're, again, I'm not, I don't dive. I don't even dive recreationally, so forget that. Uh, I just n know what I know from reading in the past. Uh, you go into this chamber and you're lowered under the water for, to whatever depth. 
and it gets pressurized, obviously, because you're going, you're going lower and lower, and uh, pressure is pushing the water up into the bottom of the bell. So you're living in a pressurized environment, and may, that's like your home away from home, if you will. Uh, you store tools and stuff in there. The diving bell is filled with a, a special mixture that you're breathing, and what's happening is your body becomes saturated eventually uh, with all these gases that normally in normal atmosphere don't uh, get seeped into your tissue, uh, but here, because you're breathing the gas, it starts to permeate your bloodstream and everything else, and it goes into your tissue, it's in your blood, it's everywhere, and eventually you become saturated, that's the term saturation diving, uh, and there's, you cannot become any more saturated with the gases, and it's fine to live like that, but the problem is that when the dive is over and you ascend, uh, to a lower pressure environment, meaning, you know, sea level, uh, those gases now want to expand. Um, and if they expand in your bloodstream or in your, bub you know, in your muscles, they bubble up, and that's called decompression sickness or the bends deadly. People certainly die from it and get extremely sick from it. Uh, and that's why there's decompression stops along the way to have the body come into equilibrium with its lo lower pressure surroundings. Uh, so you're spending all this time in this... Uh, in this pressurized environment and uh, now you're let's say you're depressurizing and coming up to the surface now it's I guess kind of important to note that even though you're in this pressurized environment this pressurized environment can be brought up to the surface if, it, if it's sealed um, and you can live in this pressurized environment and then just go back down at a later date as long as you never come into contact with the regular atmosphere you'll be fine because uh, you're living in this kind of closed bubble if you will this closed environment anyway, um, so you start ascending, and that's where they make decompression stops to make sure that all the gases and, and crap can leave your body, you know, uh, in a safe manner. Uh, but now, what's happening to the watch on your wrist? So the watch it's been, you know, timing everything you've been doing and been telling you time. Uh, there's all, like I said, these little helium when you're in these pressurized environments. Monatomic helium is extremely, extremely small, and it it's you know compared to water, which is a you know a hydrogen, uh, excuse me, two hydrogens and an oxygen, you know, Mickey Mouse polarized molecule. Uh, it's so small that it just sneaks right past all the gaskets. It goes in through the crystal gasket, it goes in through the case back gasket, the crown gasket, and it's filling up with this mixture of gas. The watch itself is also becoming saturated. Now, and then when you, so when you rise, these gases need to leave. They want to expand. The pressure is around the watch, being where you are, is getting lower and lower, and the gases want to get out. And that's where the escape valve comes in. Uh, the gases start to push against this valve. The valve is on a little spring. The spring gives up a little bit, the valve opens, and the gases leave. Uh, I guess you could get the same effect if you, uh, you know, if you pulled the crown out of the watch or something and, and, and got the O-ring seal to release uh, on the stem. Uh, you'd, I guess you'd get the same, exact same effect, but in this case, you're not really ruining the water resistance of the watch. The gases leave, uh, and if they don't leave, like I said before, if you don't have it and the watch isn't built against it, like I said, you know, this is a thousand meters. I got to believe that this is certainly built against it. Um, but if it's not, the crystal can pop off or otherwise damage the watch. Uh, so anyway, that, so the valve takes over, it lets all the gases go out, and then eventually the inside of the watch uh, becomes into equilibrium with the outside of the watch, and your watch is safe. So that is a helium escape valve. That's how it works. Uh, that's all the principles behind it. Um, like I said, it's, I think it's more of a marketing gimmick than anything. The only people that really, truly need it are those that are, you know, if you're working under a river, putting a bridge down or something, or you're welding, or, you know, real, under, real underwater workers, which most of us definitely are not. Even if you're a recreational diver, um, you're probably not going into a saturated environment. You, you might make decompression stops along the way back up uh, from your dive, but you were n the watch was never exposed to this uh, different breathing mixture of air. The watch was always in the water, so helium never got into it in the first place. So like I said, more than likely, you don't need that valve, but it makes you look cool and it makes you feel cool, and you tell and people look and they go, oh, what's that other little dot on your watch? Well, not on this watch, because this watch doesn't have it. You could say, well, that's a helium escape valve, and now, because you watch this, hopefully you can tell them why. Anyway, this has been Mark from Long Island Watch com. Please like this video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.